Good morning. My name is Pastor Frank, and I am privileged to be one of the pastors here. Pastor Amy is part of the team, and we are excited to come to worship with you and to launch into a new year. So, um, uh, let me say a word about the service. Uh, we have an extra, uh, usually we have two hymns in the service, and this morning we have three, and that is because we have a hymn that goes, is going to be inserted into my sermon. So, don't be surprised by that. I'll give you a cue, and we'll get that rolling when we need to. Uh, this is going to be a great morning to be in worship together. We welcome our online congregation, and uh, so let's turn our hearts and minds to God as we encounter God through our prelude.
I invite you to join with me in the Apostles' Creed that's printed in your worship folder if you need it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to our prayer time, we are mindful that many of our friends and neighbors in the community have been battling COVID and we are thankful for those of you who have had it and are now are restored to health and in our midst once again. Um, and we pray for all of those who are battling this dread virus, the healthcare workers, our healthcare institutions. And we look forward to a day when we'll be able to say goodbye to these masks and uh, have a level of a normalcy that will be very refreshing. Uh, Beth's and my little tribe down in Nashville are, all have COVID right now, and um, I know many of your friends and neighbors do as well. Um, I, we got a prayer request this morning. Um, Steve and Laura Gray, Steve's dad, was a district superintendent in the United Methodist Church in the West Pennsylvania Conference, and Steve's dad, good friend, is Alan Harris, another pastor in the West Pennsylvania Conference, and he was in a very serious automobile accident over the weekend, and so we have been requ requested to pray for Alan Harris. Um, we, uh, we also are, are in constant prayer for our uh, good friend, Pam Wilson. Pam is our treasurer, and uh, she's been going through a long journey with chemo, uh, and, and uh, it's very demanding for her, and, and Pam, we love you, and we look forward to uh, seeing this come to a good conclusion, uh, and we pray for your family as well. So let's turn our hearts and minds to God as we encounter God in prayer.
Oh, dear God, we pray you will be ever nearer to us. And we pray that we will ever be nearer to you. Dear God, take us by the hand and lead us on these earthly pathways until you lead us home. Help us to be mindful that we are your harvest. We are placed here to bring a fruitfulness to the human experience, not only for ourselves, but for all of your children that you love, all of your children that you made, all of your children that you are nurturing in the human experience. We pray, gracious God, for those in our community who are struggling now, their resiliency worn thin. Help us to be an encouraging presence in their lives. And Lord, you give the greatest encouragement of all by sending us Christ Jesus, our Savior and our friend. We pray that you will take those who are most fragile and infuse them with strength and a large measure of courage. And then help us to bind ourselves together with a love, with a love that never lets us go. Help us to be a strong fabric of faith in this faith family. And help us to live purposefully as we have the gift of life and breath and love and laughter and a significant measure of joy. So now we pray this prayer as we lift up all of those on our prayer list to your attention. We pray this prayer in the name of Christ who teaches us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Summer. Beautifully done. I don't, I've not heard that arrangement before. Lovely. We say all this time at this church that we are generous toward God because God is first generous toward us. And oh, how that is true in this place. So, Let's remember that this act of worship, as we return our thanks, is an act of thanksgiving every season of the year. So let's uh, invite our ushers to come forward and we will receive on God's behalf our morning offering.
Let us pray. Holy God, you chose to live among us, and you remind us that we are called to be a part of your kingdom. You have sown seeds of good in our hearts and in our lives, seeds of love and kindness. May the gifts that we give this morning reflect your goodness. May they be our affirmation that we want to serve you. We want to choose the good over the evil. And we want to live according to your loving purpose. May these gifts of our hearts bear fruit that your kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray in the holy name of Jesus, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. We continue our look at the parables in the, chap in the 13th chapter of Matthew. Today's scripture is Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30. Another parable he put before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then has it weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. May God add his blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Amy. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear and gracious God, speak to us this morning. Call us, claim us, make us your own. Amen. I've been so looking forward to this particular message because this, we're talking about finding treasure in 2022. And today we proclaim without any hesitation, you are the treasure. You are the treasure. This uh, parable that Amy read to us uh, traditionally is called the parable of the wheat and the tares. If you ever, and some of you, go between translation and translation with your Bibles, the King James transit, translation uses the word tares, meaning weeds in the wheat, the parable of the wheat and the tares. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm reminded as we start, that Harry Ironside, for 18 years a pastor at Moody Memorial Church in Chicago, understood the folly of trying to separate the wheat and the tares. He was fond of telling the story of Bishop Potter, who was sailing to Europe on one of those great transatlantic ocean liners before cruising was so popular. He went on board and found another passenger was to share his cabin with him. After going to see his accommodations, he came up to the purser's desk and inquired if he could leave his gold watch and other valuables in the ship's safe. He explained that ordinarily he would not 
ask for this privilege, but he'd been to his cabin and had met the man who would be occupying the berth with him. And judging from the man's appearance, he was afraid that the man might not be trustworthy. Quite a first impression, don't you think? So the purser accepted the responsibility for the valuables and remarked, It's all right, Bishop. We'd be very glad to help you with this. In fact, the other man has just been up here and left his valuables for the very same reason. <laughs> well, they made an impression on each other. Wheat and tares. I... I I want to insert in this message a song that we usually sing at Thanksgiving time. You know, uh, every service of worship is an act of thankfulness to God. And so I'm going to ask you to turn to number 694. And we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3 as a sermon hymn as we get started. And... As, as beautifully as you all sound, concentrate on the words of this hymn. And let's stand as we are able and sing together like we mean it. Come, ye thankful people, come. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you for singing that hymnal. The words are poignant, aren't they? As we think of wheat and tares, wheat and the weeds in the wheat. I asked the question in the earlier service, um, why, why do we eat, why do people eat organic? What's the point? It's a good question, an important question. We want to have good food, the best food we can. And we could talk about that for a long time. We, we want the good stuff and not the bad stuff. But that's not the point of this sermon today. We're talking about weeds and the wheat, wheat and the tares. Let me illustrate for you. If you've ever shaken a bit of Parmesan cheese on your pasta, 
you maybe have mused that it kind of looks like sawdust, depending on the kind of Parmesan you get. And in some ways, it might be closer to sawdust than you might think. Uh, in the year 2016, the Food and Drug Administration busted a cheese manufacturer in Pennsylvania for marketing a product that was said to be 100% Parmesan cheese when actually it contained no Parmesan cheese. Customers realized that, that they had been sprinkling imitation cheese and trimmings of other cheaper kinds of cheese Swiss cheese, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese on their pasta. And if that wasn't sneaky enough, the FDA disclosed that the Castle Cheese Incorporated had been adding other material to their cheese. That makes you want to go home and have some pasta with cheese on it, doesn't it? They had been ad ad adding to the bulk cellulose and more than a little of it, causing the customer confidence to splinter a bit with the cellulose. To be fair, a lot of cheese manufacturers do exactly that. They add a little cellulose to Parmesan cheese because it effectively helps the cheese to stay dry and refrain from clumping. The problem with the Castle Cheese Company was that they were cutting the corner so much that they had 8% cellulose in their cheese. <laughs> Our point this morning, however, is maybe you don't want cellulose in your Parmesan cheese, but you certainly don't want weeds in your wheat. If people in Je Jesus' time started messing with the wheat, which translated into creating potential problems with the bread, which was one of the very main foods of their diet, that was really a problem. And so Jesus spoke of himself as being the bread of life, the stuff of life, the sustenance of life. I am the living bread. I am the living water, the basics Jesus compared himself to. So if you started messing with the wheat, that was really serious business. And so today I want us to talk in a different way about the parable of the weeds in the wheat. Sometimes this uh, parable is used to, to try to claim that Jesus is saying that God is interested in who's in and who's out. My claim is God wants everybody to be in. God wants you to be in. God isn't interested in giving you demerits. God is interested in cultivating in you which, that which is marvelous, that he, the good seed that he has planted in you so that you will be, by your life, a proclamation of his glory, a proclamation of his glory. So, so when Jesus wanted to give us an example of what is the kingdom of heaven like. He says, true treasure is like when a man goes and plants good seed in his field. It's like that. It's like when a man goes and plants good seed in his field and it begins to grow and then the the farm hands come to him and say, Master, there are weeds in the wheat. There are weeds in the wheat. Why? You planted good seed. Why did you plant weeds in the wheat? And the master says, No, I didn't. But there are those 
who came in the night and planted weeds in the weave. Do you know there was a Roman law against planting poisonous plants in your neighbor's field? Competitive farmers would mess with each other's crops, so much so that the Romans created a law against it, against planting poisonous weeds in your neighbor's field. So my application of this, our application of this particular parable this morning is me saying to you, God planted, God has planted good seed in your life. God has planted good seed in your life enough for 2022. And God has something in mind for you in this new year, 2022. And I wouldn't be honest with you if I were to say you won't find some weeds in your wheat. But God has planted in you, and God has given you the strength and the resiliency to resist that which might defeat lesser persons. God has something in mind for you in 2022. And God intends to bring, a great, bring the harvest home. Bring the harvest home. You know, we think, we, we think in our lives, uh, Michael, we, we think in our lives the, about, about the things that hold us back. Sometimes at, at this time of the year, uh, people go out and buy some new self-help books or perhaps uh, buy a new exercise cycle. I've, I've noticed that our, 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 ellip, our elliptical exercise machine uh, at home, Beth and I have a habit of late afternoon working out together. And the elliptical exercise machine uh, has a little thump in it, and I wonder how long that will be able to last, or if, if there is a new elliptical machine in my future. I think one, I want one with all the bells and whistles, because that will make me very fit, just by the nature of having it in our house, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, well, our elliptical machine has a little thump in it, but it is there because of long use. However, God wants you to know that you do not need four or five new self-help books to earn God's love for you. God loves you just the way you are. God brought you along this far, and he planted good seed in you. And you are God's treasure. You are treasured by God. God wants to cultivate and encourage the best qualities that you possess and wants to see what good can be done in the world through the likes of us. You know, in Jesus' time, there was a weed called Darnell. Darnell. And it looked a lot like wheat. And so the, the method of, of farming in those days would be you plant your wheat, and you could, shortly after, after the um, wheat began to come up, you could do a little bit of weeding in those fields. But then once it got going, like the, the, the master of the farm, the, the landowner said, don't go out and try to pull the weeds from the wheat, wheat because you will do more harm than good. You'll trample the good stuff. 
Just wait for the harvest time. And Darnell, once, once the wheat grew up, Darnell would not grow as high. So you actually, at the harvest time, could harvest the wheat and then go back and collect the weeds. So think about how beautiful this is, okay? You get the wheat at the harvest time, you collect the weeds, and you use the weeds as fuel as you are breaking, as you are baking the bread which comes from the wheat, the wheat flour. It's almost like God had all this worked out. It's a beautiful thing. In your life, God plants good seed in your life. God made you to be a great teacher. God wants to amplify those good qualities. God made you to be a great business person. God gave you, put you in a position where you have influence over others. Will you use the influence you have to bring out the best in those you influence? I think that you will. To help the blessing to be multiplied and to, pass, to be passed along. What good will God do through the likes of us? Some of you, I know, have, have worked, have you, have, you have served the community through governmental and military responsibilities. How will God continue to use those long cultivated skills to bless us even now in 2022. It's an exceedingly exciting prospect because God has something in mind for you this year in this season and you continue to be a treasure to him. You know, those of who have been around here a while have know that we have five essential practices for Christian living. Let's rem let's remind ourselves in the, at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, five practices. Pray five times a day. Pray five times a day when you get up, breakfast, lunch, supper, when you go to bed. If you say the Lord's prayer five times a day, every day for 365 days a year, you will have said the Lord's Prayer 1,825 times. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, not only for me, but for everyone. And deliver us from evil. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Forgive as we forgive. And deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. For thine is the kingdom and thine is the power and thine is the glory forever. Say that 1,825 times this year, and your life will be changed. Pray five times a day. Add to the prayer. Read five scriptures a day. 
What I've found is when people start reading five scriptures a day, they, some of these scriptures are really good and you won't be able to stop with five. So if you just read five, then you would read 1,825 scriptures in a year. But I guarantee you're going to be reading thousands. And that may be the most you have ever read scripture in your life. And you'll be shaped by it. Serve every day. Serve every day. Summer, I know you serve every day. I know, I know your, what your job is. You reach out to people. The kind of uh, magnetism that we experience when you sing, you bring to all your endeavors of life. And it's with a heart of service. We sent out, a, when we sent out a, uh, an e-blast this week talking about our uh, re-entry ministries and our prison ministries. There are ways that you can, we, we do this spiritual development program in two of the prisons around here, and, and there are ways you can participate in that. Maybe you want to, we, we make, bake thousands of cookies for this, these spiritual retreats for prisoners. And then when people get out of prison, we set them up in a, an apartment. And we donate all kinds of goods so that they'll be able to get a good start. And you can read about it. And if you didn't get the email, I'll make sure you get it. But there are countless ways to serve. Once in a while, you're willing to have folks volunteer in our children's division here at the church, aren't you? One of the great things we do here is vacation Bible school in the summer and we have an army of volunteers great ways to serve in the church in the community serve every day random acts of kindness and in organized ways too wait well uh, we have uh, we have a uh, sandwiches for the homeless ministry and usually people actually make the sandwiches and get the jelly on the right side of the bread. Um, meals. Meals for faith mission. And, you know, in, in, uh, um, at Christmas time, we were collecting baby wipes. We do that four times a year, and we fully subscribe the need for the baby wipes. Again this time. Thank you very much for that. Very successful. So we serve every day. Find ways to serve every day. That's the point. We pray five times a day. Read five scriptures a day. Serve every day. We show our gratitude. We, we are generous toward God because God is first generous toward us. This is such a generous church. And then share. Always be thinking about who might need a lifeline from God. The lifeline God sends us, Jesus Christ. And we create a, a, a culture of invitation here. And so your friends will feel welcome in this place. So God has sown good seed within you. And what I'm saying to you is this year be especially faithful to your own spiritual growth. Share grace with your neighbors with whom your your roots are intertwined and trust in the expertise of the master who is the one who does the planting to reveal in your life his amazing grace. You know that 
So here, here I'm, cl- I'm, I'm going to close with this. The Castle Cheese Company filed for, bankrupt- fat filed for bankruptcy after it was found to be the manufacturer of fake cheese. Because they claimed to be selling on the outside, which was not actually happening on the inside. And we've seen some people try to live life pretending to be God's people when they're not. And we don't want to be that. So I'm here to suggest this morning that you are a Christ follower in 2022 and you are a treasure for God in this place and time. God planted good seed in you. There will be some weeds in the wheat which you can overcome and will not steal the harvest that God intends. Can we pray together before we sing our closing hymn? Oh, dear God, we thank you for the purpose. We thank you for planting, doing good planting in the likes of us. We thank you in advance for the harvest and for the privilege of participating in it. So let us receive the year 2022 with anticipation and help us to see each other as you see all of us, as your beloved sons and daughters. And we pray in Christ's name, amen. Friends, let's rise as we are able to sing Precious name number 536. precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy when his loving arms receive us, when our joy, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Now, 
Now I'm going to ask you to turn to 536 once more because after I give the benediction, I want you to sing verse 3, a cappella. Okay? All right. So, the weeds will not defeat you. The weeds will not steal your nourishment. You will grow tall until there is a fruitful harvest. In 2022, God has that kind of purpose planned for you. Pray, study, serve, be generous, and share your faith as God will show you how. Verse number three. Can we have a pitch? Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy when his loving arms receive us and his songs tongues employ precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven Go in love, go in peace.